Hi all, this is Tiffany. Instead of doing part two to my original video, I just decided to do one video showing the whole process from start to finish. So the first part is scale. You need to have scale, which is sure cuts a lot. The version that I have is version four. Actually, the exact version is 4.061. I believe version five is available online. I do not know the differences between version five and versions 4.061 but I have 4.061 and it allows me to do what I need to do with rhinestones. So the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out what it is that you want to convert to rhinestones. Preferably a picture. Words get to be a little bit more complicated, but pictures are usually pretty simple. So what I've gone ahead and done was download a file already. So to pull that file up in shortcuts a lot, I have to go to trace. When I get into Trace, it takes me to this menu and I go to choose an image. The file I'm gonna work with today is the IU logo. My daughter attends IU and I'm gonna make her a bling shirt. So I'm gonna open up that image and this is what will appear on the screen. I do not touch or alter any of these slides or any of these numbers, I leave it just as it is. I'm not sure what would happen if I did that and until I really need to know, I will probably never know. So from here, I'll just hit okay. And you see now that it has popped up on the screen and I can see it. Right now I'm at a 50% view. I'm gonna make it just a hair smaller just so I can see it. So I'm gonna take it down to 25, which is neither here nor there at the moment. But right now it's at 25. So there's my image. In order to convert that to rhinestones, I now need to go up to effects, click on effects and come down to rhinestones. Once I get into rhinestones, I scroll down till I get to SS10. SS10 is the most commonly used size for rhinestone shirts for bling wear. You see there are two options. I normally select the first option and I will explain why in just a second, but I normally select the first option and then I come down here and select my stone. I'm using round stone, so I'm gonna select the round, round stone option. At this point, I have a choice. I can click here to fill the entire shape with stones, or if I click nothing, you will see here, it will only give me the outline. So let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. It will give me the outline, and you can see that that is the outline for the IU logo, okay? Top to bottom. Just a bunch of little dots going around the outline. If that's what she wanted, great. I would be done at this point and ready to move on, but I know that's not what she wants. She actually wants it filled with rhinestones. So I'm gonna go back into effects. I'm gonna come back down to rhinestones again, and I'm going to select fill shape with stones. And when I click okay, that image is now going to be converted into a bunch of little round dots. Okay, so there is my image now as a bunch of little round dots. Each of those dots represents a rhinestone, okay? Now, as far as sizing goes, Right now, it is at 8.36 inches wide and it's 10.556 inches high. She has already told me that that is too big for the shirt that she wants to put it on. So I need to do some sizing. This is the time and the place to do the sizing. You will not be able to size this, op this image once it gets into Cricut, so you need to get it sized right now. There's a 90% chance that the proportions you put in here will be present when you actually go to Cricut. Sometimes Cricut will adjust it up a little or down a little, I don't know why, and I don't know how to stop that. But here is where you wanna get it pretty approximate to where you want it. My daughter's already expressed that she wants it to be no higher than 10 inches. So I'm gonna change that 10.8 to a flat out 10. When I do that, it automatically changed the width to 7.921 and it's still proportional because I have the key proportion selected. When you're changing the size, do not, do not, do not, do not use the little arrow in the corner to drag your image because if you drag it, it's gonna take it out of proportion. Change either one number or the other up here, but do not change both, okay? So change one or the other, either change the height or change the width, but don't change both numbers because it will no longer be in proportion, okay? And do not drag it from here because it will no longer be in proportion either. At this point, it's as high as she wants it, which is 10 inches, and it's going to be a width that is proportionate with a 10 inch height. So I'm content with what I'm seeing here. What I need to do now is I need to go in and look closely at these rhinestones. 
What I'm gonna do is look to make sure that they're not too close together, they're not touching, and that there are no stones that are overlapping. Because if that is the case, your Cricut will cut holes that are too big, and the fine little lines between the rhinestones will get taken away, and you won't be able to drop rhinestones into the template. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to do a right click, and I need to break apart the entire image. I took it from being a group of stones, or dots rather, to now I can manipulate individual dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so I can see actually what I'm looking at. I'm gonna go to 100%, because I'm looking now to see what is going on with these dots. Are they too close together? Do they touch each other? Are there random dots in there that are overlapping? So as I zoom in, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper in and I'm gonna address what I think is a problem. And that's gonna be this top line up here. To me, this top line tends, seems to be a little too close to this line. So because I've actually ungrouped them, I can now select individual dots, okay? I can take these dots, I can copy these dots by doing a right click, doing copy, and then I can paste the dots. Do another right click and paste it. I can take this dot and move this dot anywhere I need to move this dot. Say I did the image and there was a hole here or a gap, I can literally copy a dot and put a dot in that gap, okay? I could also delete dots. Say that this dot, when I pulled the image up, was randomly placed right here and I didn't need that dot, I could simply select it and backspace and get rid of that dot. The spacing looks pretty good except for here. So I'm gonna now, instead of doing this dot by dot, I'm gonna come up and select that whole top row of dots because I wanna move that whole row up just a little bit. Using the arrow keys, it's gonna move it up too far. So instead of the arrow key, I'm gonna come over and use my nudge key. With the nudge button, I'm able to go up just a little bit. If you notice that line is now no longer as close to that line as it once was, and I do have space between my dots. So I'm content with that change. I'm gonna go ahead and come down a little bit, and I'm gonna check out the rest of my image. I wanna look to the left and to the right, because if I had to move them across the top, it is conceivable that I might need to move these as well too, but those look okay, so I'm content with what I'm seeing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down and just kinda of look around and see, do I see any dots that are too close together that need to be moved apart, do I see any dots that are overlapping one another? A dot sitting on top of a dot? What exactly do I see that could make this image cut less than desirable? So far, everything looks good. Images that are pretty much straight lines, you don't have to do a lot of adjusting to. Images with curves, that's when that becomes a problem in their curves. Now, down here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I think there needs to be a skosh more space between there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these bottom dots and I'm going to use my nudge key again and come down just a little bit and now I think that that looks better as far as cutting though there's space to cut between those dots now okay so now that that's been done my image is ready for me to go ahead and group it back together I'm just going to zone zoom out a little bit to like 75% what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to go up to edit. I'm going to come down and hit select all. Select all will take all of those dots and put them together into just one group. They are not welded. They're just individual dots that are going to work together as a group that I can move places and do anything I want to with. So if I need to move it over, I can now move it over and you'll see the dots, all the dots are moving, not just one or two dots. Okay. So I can pretty much move it wherever I need to. I'm good now. So now that I've got them all together, I'm going to now tell this to please group my dots. My dots have been grouped, okay? I think I just said that twice. I'm sorry if I did. I'm confusing myself right now. But anyway, all my dots are together. Now I'm ready to go up here and I'm going to do a file and I save these projects twice. The first time I save it, I save it in my scowl folder, my sure cuts a lot folder. And I will say this one as S-C-A-L, which stands for sure cuts a lot. And I'm going to title this one I-U Logo. So it is now saved there. The next thing I do is I export this. I'm going to now export it so that it becomes an SVG. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to come down to 
file export on my computer it automatically opens up in my rhinestone svg folder that i've created because that's the folder that i've been working in the most so here i will put a title on here for that i'm uh, sorry a name for that particular logo so i'm going to title this one iu logo it's in my rhinestone file so i know automatically when i go to pull this up in cricut it's going to be a rhinestone file once i do that this screen comes up and it is imperative that if it's not already clicked, which it should be, if it's not already selected, you want to make sure that you have a check mark where it says design space compatible. Once you do that, hit the OK. And now this image has been converted to a SVG that you will be able to now go into Cricut and pull up. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Cricut. I am in design space. I'm going to go, I have created, opened up a new project. It's untitled as of right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go in there and I'm going to upload. And I need to go in there and find that image that I just created, that SVG that I just created. And it went right to my rhinestone folder because that's the folder I've been working out of the most. You may have to go find your folder, which is not hard to do. But once you get to where you need to go, get your file and go ahead and hit open. It may take a second for the file to open because this is a pretty big file. Each one of those dots represents an image that makes up this file. So now that you see it, it's up. I don't need to do any editing to this. This is perfect the way it is. I can go ahead now and save it. I have a title IU logo, so I'm good. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. This is a pretty large image, so it might take a second or two for it to save. So it may not save instantaneously like we're used to seeing our files save. Because again, each one of these dots represents a component of this total picture. So it could take a few minutes for it to pull up. All right, so now that it's appeared here, I am able to now go down here to it. And I can select it and I can insert this image into my design space. Now, this is the part that may take a while. Again, all of those dots represent a piece of this image that we just created. And it tells you loading image large is may take a while for it to load. It warns you in advance that that's a possibility. I have seen these files take as long as 10, 15 minutes to load upload. So it all strictly depends upon the file. But as you see here, it is working to upload each and every single dot individually, which is why it takes so long for these files to upload. All right, so we're back. That took approximately 10 minutes for this to download all of these billions and millions of little dots here that are going to actually become the holes for the rhinestones when you get ready to cut your template. So what I need to do from here is I need to now go up here to select all because I need to now take all of those dots and actually weld them together into one single image. So I'm going to go up here and click select rather select all and it will actually show you that now all of the dots are together and they're in one image. I'm also able now to see my length and width. So I'm able to see if there was a distortion from what I originally wanted to what I have now. And I do see there is a distortion. We wanted a 10 inch high logo. This logo is actually 10.089. So it is a skosh, maybe two skoshes and a twist, higher than it, what I originally wanted to be, which was 10 inches. And it's actually even a little bit wider. I believe it was 7.9 something before. It is now 8.031 wide. So now that I've done this and I've selected everything together, I did a select all. I now need to come down here and hit weld. And this is going to take a while too. So I'm going to stop the video at this point and we will pick back up when the welding process is complete and I'll tell you approximately how long that took too. All right, so after 30 minutes for it to take for the file to group together, we're ready to start cutting the file. But before I cut the file, I wanna prepare my sticky flock. I've had a very bad and hard time with sticky flock. I have cut things out, pulled this up, and all the holes were still stuck in here. They weren't stuck to the backing. So in my infinite wisdom, I have decided to try something different. 
So I'm gonna get my sheet cut. I need an 11 by nine sheet, so I have that here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna pull the top half of this down. I'm gonna go in here and lift up this white backing. Lift that up. And I'm gonna fold this down. I'm gonna now take this, lay it back up here, stick it down, and now I'm gonna pull this up. And I'm going to remove the backing from my sticky block. And the reason I'm doing this is because I would like to cut this and cut it one time only and not waste any more of this expensive sticky flock. I'm still working on the alternative to sticky flock, but it's not going as well as I hoped it would go. I'm actually gonna take a, cut, a trip to Joann's while this is cutting to see if I can, if Joann's can help me. But anyway, so this time I'm gonna to try to cut it with the sticky flock adhered directly to my mat, which means hopefully, theory, not going with it, hopefully when I go to pull it up, all the little holes will be stuck to the mat and I can scrape those off. All right, so I got my sticky flock mounted on there. I'm gonna go in here and do what I would normally do. It's already one whole image because we welded it. I'm gonna hit make it. There is no need to reverse the image or anything because I wanna drop the stones in it just like I see it. I'm going to hit continue. And because I'm trying this a different way this time, I I think I will attempt to cut it on custom. I think I will go with my magnetic sheet. I'm gonna go with the 0.5, but I'm gonna change the pressure to more, and I'm going to start the cutting process. This is probably going to take about 30 or 45 minutes to cut because there are so many tiny little circles to cut out. So after it's cut, I will show you what happens when I pull it off the mat. Hopefully all the little circles will be stuck to the mat and I will pull this up in a single sheet that will be full of holes. And then I'll show you how I mount that and how I put the stones in there. All right, before we get started and see if when I pull this up, the holes actually cut, let's hope and pray they did. I know they cut because I can see them, but let's hope they stick to this and not the sticky flock. Before we do that, let's talk about tools of the trade. So here are a couple of things that are essential to rhinestone placement and templates. Number one, of course, you need to have your stones. On these stones, if you look closely, you can see that there is black on the back of these stones. If you are attempting to do a rhinestone template and there is no black on the back of these stones, you're going to waste a lot of time and effort and energy. The black is the glue. You must have adhesive back or hot fix rhinestones for rhinestone templates. I learned that the hard way. The other thing that's very important, this, I'm not sure if it's called a rhinestone tool, but what it really is in the real world is a paint trim tool. I got this at Lowe's and it came with an extra head on it. When I'm ready to replace it, this will slide off and this one will simply slide back on it. I think I paid three or four dollars for this, but this is it get it from Lowe's, do not get a specialty product. The other thing, these are the Cricut tweezers. These are the best tweezers for rhinestone picking up and dropping because of that pinching action. You don't have to worry about squeezing it to keep it closed. When you let go of it, it automatically closes so you can transport the rhinestone wherever you need to without fear of dropping it. So these are wonderful. Obviously your weeding tool, you'll need it for many reasons, but a couple of times I've had to use it to move rhinestones around a little bit. So there's that. And then this is something that I created. Remember earlier when I mentioned the two different sizes of rhinestones that are on the shortcut slot program? The first one, I made this cut a 10-1 because there was 10, an SS-10, that was a top one, then there was an SS-10 on the bottom. So this is a 10-1 and this is a 10-2. If you look closely, and I do mean very closely, these holes are slightly larger than these holes are. So what I use this for is when I order rhinestones, even if you order them from the same company, it doesn't guarantee you that they're gonna be the same size every time. So every time I get rhinestones, I put them on here and I go through the process of brushing them in to see which one of these is the one for the design I'm going to be using. 
The worst thing in the world is to cut something that is too small or too large and you can't use it because then you'll waste the sticky flock and the sticky flock is too expensive to waste. So I made myself a template. What I probably should have done is just a one and a two. I could have left off all the 10 stuff, but I did the 10 one, 10 two. 10 one represents the first line I see when I go into scale to create rhinestones and 10 two is the second line. These are slightly larger than these are. So there's that. All right, so those are the tools of the trade. Now I'm going to see if my newest technique works. I'm going to attempt to lift this sheet off. And if I if this worked correctly, when I lift it off, there's just going to be a bunch of holes in my sheet and all the little middle pieces will be stuck on here. So let's see if it works. And I'm praying to the sweet little six pound, eight ounce crafting God that it does because I have wasted so much sticky flock. It appears to be working. So far, I have not less lost or left a single hole in my template. The good thing about the sticky flock is it is very thick. So by me pulling it, I am not destroying the hole size or hurting them. I'm simply getting it off of there. It is very, very thick. I do see now right here, one, two, two dots are still in there, but that's okay. That's better than the 30 or 40 thousand I've had to weed out before. So I will say that was a successful lifting and I'm very happy to say that, okay? Now, another tip. This is my rhinestone template. I need to go and get out this dot, this dot, this dot, and that dot. When you go to get your dots out, make sure you do it with the sticky side up because when you go in there and push those dots down, if you do it with this side down, they're all going to stick to this because this is still sticky. So please do it sticky side up to save yourself a tremendous amount of cleanup and scraping trying to get those dots off the sticky part. So I just go through there, push them in, and I'm done. I hold it up to the light to look at it closely to make sure I've gotten all of the holes out. And I'm convinced that I have. I do see one right here that's hanging on the back, but now it's gone. So that is a successfully weeded piece of sticky flock. And I will forever now use it this way, sticking it directly to my mat versus trying to stick this to my mat with the backing on there because this does not work. I cannot stress that enough. I would get it, I've had it cut all the way through this and the hole still not come out. It was a mess. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mount this back onto the backing. It's not important that I get it perfectly on here, but just that I get it on here. So I'm gonna mount it back to this. And I see now that I still have a dot. I may have picked it up along the way, but these tweezers are amazing. I just scoot that up and move it out the way and I'm done. Stick this down and make sure I get it nice and smooth because if there's any raised areas or the flocking is not all the way down, the rhinestones could possibly slide up under it. So now that I've done that, I'm just gonna move this out the way because I'm done with that mat for right now. And I'll actually take a credit card or something and I'll be able to just scrape these off of here. And I know that from experience because I did a lot of scraping the other night, but you can already see how easily they're coming off. So when I'm ready to scrape them off, that's not gonna be a big issue. And that is a light grip, grip mat and it's an old mat, so it doesn't have as much stick on it as a normal light grip mat would have. So when I get down to actually placing my stones, take your stones and you pour them onto whatever your rhinestone template. More is best in this case because what you're gonna do now is take your tool and you're just gonna push the stones around on the template. Now, if I was smart, I would have put something under here like a big piece of paper to catch all those stones you see up here that are rolling off the edge. But sometimes I don't do the most logical things in my life. So as you go through, you just brush them in there basically. Because someone asked, do you place them one by one? And my response was, Lord, no, you do not. So as you can see, I'm going to come through and I'm just going to work them in. And they actually literally will work themselves into these holes. And they will work themselves into these holes, amazingly enough, glue side down. 
glue side down. It gets no better than that. So the only time I will go back and manually do anything is after I've gone through and used my tool and got my image as full as possible, I'm gonna pretend like I'm already done, which I'm not. As you can see, I got a lot more to go. I would go back now, I would pick up a stone. For instance, if I needed to drop one in this hole right here, because of the way these tweezers works, I can hold that stone in there without me squeezing this. So that means if I lose grip, it's not gonna fall. I can take it, put it right over top of the hole, squeeze them, drop it, and the stone is in there. That's why I think that these tweezers are the best tweezers ever for this. Stick it in there, push it down, come back, grab another one, stick it in there, push it down, come back, grab another one, stick it in there. Well, I don't think I need one right there. Uh, let's see where I need one at. Mm, right there, and just drop it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, go off camera, get my whole design finished, then I'll show you how I lift it. All right, so in less than five minutes, this is what was filled in on the rhinestone template. If you look at it, it looks to be pretty full with the exception of a few holes. And again, that's where these wonderful tweezers come into play. So I'm just gonna lean down here and pick up a stone. And again, it's locked in there. Drop it, lightly tap it. You don't wanna push it too hard because if you push it all the way into the hole, there's a chance that when you go to pull it up with your backing, you're not going to be able to pull it up. That stone will get stuck in there. And then you have to go back and add stones to the back of the sticky paper. And that's not impossible and it's not difficult, but it's one step that you definitely want to avoid if you can avoid it. You can see that this process is going pretty fast. So it's not like a time consuming process where I have to sit here and measure and figure out. I just pick up a stone, find a hole, drop a stone, pick up another stone, find another hole, drop another stone. So that is how this works. And again, do not be tempted to push these stones in as hard and as far as you can because you do not want them to get caught in there. When you go to take the sticky transfer tape away, it will not lift up. And those stones will be stuck in there. But they, I mean, they pop right out, so it's not like they're stuck in there forever. And the template is really usable. So when my daughter wears this shirt to school and she shows all her little friends, and they see it, I have it available. If somebody wants to order one, I can come in here, pull this template back out, throw those stones on there and complete the same brushing process and knock out a shirt in probably 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm already 98% done with putting the stones in place. All right, I'll finish this up and then I'll come back and show you how to lift them with the transfer tape. All right, so now that we've got it completely filled in, I wanna say fill in time, we probably spent a total, maybe, of seven, eight minutes getting this done. My daughter helped me a little bit, so maybe seven or eight minutes to get this process done. The, um, it's completely filled in. Now I'm gonna take my transfer paper and this is not the regular run-of-the-mill transfer paper you get from Cricut, from Michael's Hobby Lobby. This is a special heat transfer paper. That means you can heat this up in your press and it's not going to melt and ruin your image. What I need to do now is lay this on here and you cannot lay it and pick it up because the stones are gonna come with it. So I just gotta kinda lay it on there and pray a little bit. Drop it mm. and stop. And if you look on there closely, you can see where some of them raised up. That's okay. Because what I'm gonna do now is lightly go over it, just lightly. I don't wanna push too hard because I do not want to push these stones deep into those holes and then try to lift this up and nothing happens. That is the last thing I wanna do. I have also flipped this all over before and pushed it from the back, which did nothing but pushed it further in there in the holes as well too, so that was pointless. So I'm just gonna lightly graze this with my fingernails. And then that's enough. I don't wanna apply a lot of pressure right now. I just wanna basically get the stones onto the sticky transfer material. The reason these stones stick are because the tops of these um, rhinestones, it's flat. 
that's how it works. The tops are flat, so the stones will stick to it because it's flat, okay? Or the tape will stick to it because it's flat. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull my image up, and I'm gonna see just how many of them get stuck behind. You can see there are several up here that got stuck. I have a couple options. I can lay it back in there and try to go back and get them out by pushing down on top of them. That worked. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they're in there too deep and you can't. This is probably the easier way to tackle that problem because the alternative is once I pull it up, I have to go in there and lay the stones in there manually. So it just depends on what you want to do. Now, hopefully I won't have a lot of these doing this toward the bottom, but it is truly a hit or miss and it could happen and it might not happen. As you can see, I'm leaving behind several here. I'm gonna let those stay where they are because to me, it's probably a little bit more work, or maybe not, doing it this way is your call. You will make that determination for yourself, but getting them out is what we need to do. Hmm, so maybe it's not as bad as I think it is. So I'm gonna come over here on this side now. I'm just gonna apply a little pressure to the tops of the ones that are stuck. Just enough pressure so that they can get back to the sticky and hopefully the sticky will pull them out. So, and again, some of them will come out. Some of them may not come out. It all just depends on how deeply embedded they are in there. But this is why you do not want to apply pressure to the top and push this sticky transfer tape down onto them. Because if you do that, then you're gonna be losing a lot of stones and you'll have a lot of manual work to do. The goal here is to work smarter and definitely not any harder. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this process up. Then I'm gonna show you what I do to the back of it. Once I get them all lifted up, I'm gonna come back and show you what I do to the back of it. All right, so now that I've gotten them all picked up, as I look at the back, some of them are starting to turn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this down flat. And there are a couple on here, too, that did not get picked up still. I'm gonna put this on here so you guys can see it at home. So you can see exactly what's going on here. So, all right, so now I need to go in and do a little fixing. So one thing I need to do is the ones that are turned on their sides, I need to push them flat. I can actually push those down with my finger. Now, as you zoom in, you will see some of these, the backs are not black. Those stones have to go because those are stones that are not going to stick because they don't have any glue on them. So for whatever reason, this stone has completely lost its backing, so it has to leave. Again, that is why these tweezers are so amazing because you can get in super duper tight spots. Well, you can, I can't seem to get in there, but you can get in super duper tight spots and remove problems. So let's try, oh, there we go, there we go. Gone, okay. So I'm just gonna pick up another one. It's shiny side down, I'm gonna pick up another one and I'm going to take this one and put this one in the spot where the other one was. I'm just gonna set over top of it and when I let go and drop it, it's right where it needs to be. Actually, it's not, so I'm gonna scoot down a little bit. There you go. Now I'm gonna push it down with my finger and that's gonna help it stick. Here's one where the back is completely silver. There's no adhesive on that. That's probably my fault because I mixed up stones the other night. So I'm gonna pull that one out. That one's gone. That one can actually go in the trash if we don't really need that one. I'm gonna come over here to my pile of randoms I left over here and just pick up another one. I'm gonna hover over it, drop it, use the point, the fine point of these tweezers if I need to, to move it around and manipulate it to where I need it to go. Because I did drop it a little too soon. There we go. It's still too close. So I need to manipulate it a little bit more so I can use the tip to push it. There we go. And now I'm gonna use my finger to just push it down. I need to do that here 
I need to do that here because there's a stone that has a silver, completely silver on the back, and there's a stone missing there. Once I get those done, I will be ready then to transfer this back to its original backing. And I will show you that because this should not take very long at all. So I'm gonna drop that in there, then push it down with my finger. So that one's taken care of. Let me come over here and drop this one in. Push that with my finger, that one's taken care of. I saw a silver one down here that needs to be removed, so I'm gonna remove this one completely. There we go. Put that one up there, because it's gonna go in the garbage. And then here's one sitting here, I'm gonna grab it if I can, which I couldn't, so I'll just pick up another one. And now I'm picking them up face down, because I need the face to go down and the adhesive side to be up. So, scooch that one down just a skosh, right there. And then I'm gonna push it down again with my finger. So that one's where it needs to be. And then I need one right there, and then I should be done. Almost where it needs to be. There we go. So now, I actually am not done. I just found another one over here that needs to be replaced. I'm gonna push that down with my finger now. And again, I can push these down because the tops of these stones are flat. So I'm pushing a flat surface against a skinny, a, sorry, a sticky surface, and that is why they're sticking down there. There we go. So I'm gonna drop, and I like to be able to rotate this around so I don't have to reach over and ruin anything. Oops. And this is very sticky. I'm gonna set it there, drop it, and there you go. Put my finger on there. And now I'm looking at the back to see if I see any more that are white or clear or look distorted. This one needs to be changed. There's one that's not flat. That was my daughter's finger who just jumped in the picture. And, all right. So I'm now going to take this one out which one was I changing? I think it was this one, maybe? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out too because it appears to be pretty scraped up on the back. So if it's scraped up on the back, that means that it's not fully covered in adhesive. And I don't wanna take a chance on any of these stones coming off when someone washes, when she washes a shirt, so. Now, I've not been doing rhinestones long enough to tell you how well these wash, so I don't know the answer to that question yet. My recommendation for washing would be turn it inside out, and I probably would not wash it in hot water. I'd probably do warm water. That's just my first mind on that one. So, now that that's done, they're all there. Everybody has adhesive. I'm going to take the back, and instead of trying to put this on top of the back, I'm actually going to lay this on top of here. And now I can put pressure on there. I can actually put the pressure on there and help those adhere better to the front. I can put all the pressure I want to on the back now. Everything should be nice and flat. And then I can turn it over, and there is my completed rhinestone design. And all I have to do now, when I'm ready, is lift it up off the sheet. And they should all stick to this now. I should not have any of them dropping off. I'm ready to lift it up off the sheet, place it on my shirt, and then do my press. So there you have start to finish how to take an image offline, put it into Sure Cuts a lot, convert it over to a rhinestone image, export that image into Design Space, actually cut that image, then actually go in and place the stones inside of it, and then from there lift it up. There it is, the whole process. If you want to see me heat press it down, I will do that. But um, I don't follow directions, so what I tell you is probably not manufacturer's recommendation, but it works for me. So, 
All right, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, feel free to post them or to reach out to me via Messenger. And once the shirt's complete, I will actually then take a picture of it and show you a picture of the completed project. Cause we, I think she said she's gonna put on a red shirt. So we may go grab a shirt tonight and maybe I'll be able to post that tomorrow. Thank you guys again, bye-bye.